Nephrotic syndrome is a very commonly seen case in pediatric clinics and IPDs. The latest edition of Nelson, that is the 21st, is largely based on KDPO guidelines of the year 2012. In this video, I shall be discussing the latest KDPO guidelines 2020 for managing nephrotic syndrome in children and contrast it with the previous. KDPO stands for Kidney Disease Improving Global Outcomes. As per this, nephrotic syndrome is simply nephrotic range proteinuria and either hypoalbuminemia or edema. Compared with what we know till date, that nephrotic syndrome is nephrotic range proteinuria leading to a triad of hypoalbuminemia and edema and hyperlipidemia. There is one more change here and it is that while hypoalbuminemia was earlier defined as serum albumin less than equal to 2.5 grams per deciliter, now it is simply taken to be less than 3 grams per deciliter. Nephrotic range proteinuria continues to be defined by a urine protein creatinine ratio of more than 2 as was previously. Remission 2 has been defined as previously, that is urine PCR less than 0.2, but two new terminologies have come up. First is complete remission where urine PCR is less than 0.2 and second is partial remission where urine PCR is between 0.2 to 2. Relapse is urine protein 3 plus on dipstick for 3 consecutive days. But now they have added one more aspect which is proteinuria more than equal to 1 plus for 7 days. While steroid sensitive, steroid resistant, infrequently relapsing and frequently relapsing nephrotic syndrome have been defined as previously, a new term called as late responder has been introduced in whom complete remission was achieved at 6 weeks of steroid therapy. A change has also been introduced while defining steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome and it says that relapse even on full dose of steroid should also be considered as steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome in addition to that on alternate day or within 15 days of discontinuation. For initial treatment, oral corticosteroids for 8 that is 4 weeks daily and 4 weeks alternate or 12 weeks that is 6 plus 6 dose in daily it is 2 mg per kg per day or 60 mg per meter square per day maximum 60 mg and alternate day it is 1.5 mg per kg or 40 mg per meter square every alternate day. Initial treatment for 16 to 24 weeks is recommended in children aged 1 to 4 to 6 years as they are at higher risk of progression to frequently relapsing or steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome due to their younger age at onset. This is new, especially if they have a delayed response to prednisolone that is remission in 10 to 15 days from treatment initiation. Here one must note that around 10 to 15 years back when we were residents, it was said that therapy should be for 6 weeks daily and 6 weeks alternate. Nelson 21st mentions that therapy should be for 4 weeks daily and 8 weeks to 5 months alternate with tapering. Now KDECO 2020 states that therapy should be for 4 plus 4 or 6 plus 6 weeks except in two categories of children. First is children 1 aged 1 year to 4 to 6 years and second is children taking 10 to 15 days to show initial response to steroids. In these children, therapy should be for a total of 4 to 6 months. One more new point has come up and this is administration of daily low dose corticosteroids 0.5 mg per kg for 5 to 7 days during episodes of upper respiratory tract infection and infections of the like to prevent relapses. For treatment of relapse, prednisolone daily until remission for at least 3 days followed by alternate day for at least 4 weeks. Follow the same regime even in frequently relapsing or steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome. But those children who develop serious corticosteroid related adverse effects use steroid sparing agents instead of giving them no treatment at all or treatment with steroids again and again. Prior to initiating any steroid sparing agent, patients should ideally be in remission with steroids themselves. See, this is very important point. As regards the choice of steroid sparing agents, cyclophosphamide and levamisole are preferable in frequently relapsing nephrotic syndrome and mycophenolate, mofetil, rituximab, cyclophosphamide and then calcineurin inhibitors in that order are preferred in steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome. 
Prognosis is best predicted by patient's response to initial treatment and frequency of relapse during the first year after the treatment. Renal biopsy is not required routinely at initial presentation but should be reserved for children with resistance to therapy or having an atypical clinical course. For example, age more than 12 years on initial presentation, presence of syndromic features or a positive family history. So we see that KDGO has recommended a new algorithmic therapeutic approach to nephrotic syndrome in children right from the initial onset. As per it, a new nephrotic should be first evaluated in terms of three things. These are age less than 12 years or not, syndromic features present or not, and family history positive or negative. If the answer to any of these is no, then the patient should be subject to renal biopsy and or genetic testing and be referred to a nephrologist or a renal specialist. If the answer to all these is yes, then in that case you start treatment with corticosteroids. On corticosteroids, a patient may be non-responder, in which case you should again subject the patient to genetic testing, renal biopsy, treat with calcineurin inhibitors and renin angiotensin aldosterone block. If the patient is a complete responder, then in that case you give corticosteroids for 8 to 12 weeks and 16 to 24 weeks if the age is 4 to 6 years, up to 4 to 6 years and or the patient takes around 10 to 15 days to show initial response to steroids. Now three possibilities are there. First, the first possibility is that uh, the patient may not relapse at all. The more commoner possibilities are that the patient may be an, a frequent relapser, an infrequent relapser or a steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome. If he is a frequent relapser, then you must give cyclophosphamide, levamisole, MMF, rituximab, calcineurin inhibitors, these steroid sparing agents in this order. An infrequent relapser should preferably be treated with corticosteroids themselves and a steroid dependent child should be treated with MMF, rituximab, cyclophosphamide, calcineurin inhibitors in that order. So to summarize, nephrotic syndrome is now defined only by two things. First is nephrotic range proteinuria and second is either hypoalbuminemia or edema. Proteinuria more than equal to 1 plus for 7 days also is considered to be relapse. Late responder is one who takes 6 weeks to respond. Steroid dependence should be labeled even if relapses occur on full dose of steroids after achieving remission. Evaluate three things at onset and decide the treatment accordingly and these are age, whether age is less than or more than 12 years at onset, syndromic features present or absent and family history positive or negative. Also initial treatment should be for 4 plus 4 or 6 plus 6 weeks except in children aged 1 year to 4 to 6 years and children who respond after 10 to 15 days of steroid initiation in whom you give 16 to 24 weeks of steroid therapy. Choice of steroid sparing agents is cyclophosphamide and levamisole in frequently relapsing nephrotic syndrome in that order and mycophenolate mofetil, rituximab, cyclophosphamide and calcineurin inhibitors in steroid dependent nephrotic syndrome in that order. Thank you.